Welcome back everyone to the Thinkorswim tutorial series, where today we're going to be learning how to place more complex option spreads within Thinkorswim. We're going to be specifically focusing on the different ways to create the spreads, but we're also going to go through a few different examples to really make sure you get the hang of it. Now, the very first thing we're going to have to do is head up here to the Trade tab, and specifically the All Products page, where if we throw in a symbol down below, in this case I'm going to throw in Google for this example. Looking down below, we can now see a list of all of the different options expirations available to us. And if you remember in the last video, just breaking this down really quick, you'll first see the dates of expiration on the left, the number of days until expiration in parentheses, and then when you click on one of the expiration dates, you'll then see a list of the available strikes right down the middle. We discussed it before, but if I wanted to expand this list of strikes, I simply come up here to the top where it currently says four, and in my case, I'm going to throw in 20 strikes in here. After I do that, I can then see a much longer list of the available strikes down here. So starting here at 135, going out to 190, and just as a quick refresher, remember within Thinkorswim, whenever I want to buy something, I'm going to click on the asking price. Whenever I want to sell something, I'm going to click on the bid price. So just as a quick example, if I was bullish on Google, I thought it was going to go up, and I was looking at buying the 170 calls, which looking right here I can see is currently going for 525 by 540. Since I want to buy it, I'm going to click on the asking price of 540, and as soon as I do, I'm going to see the option get built out down here below, or excuse me, the trade get built out right down here below. So here I could then specify I only want to buy, let's say, two contracts of the Google 15 November 170 calls, and here I can specify the price I wanted to pay. But instead of simply buying a call option, let's say I wanted to do something a little bit more complex, like turn this into a long vertical call spread. Now I will admit there's actually a few different ways to do that within Thinkorswim, but if we go through the first way real quick, what we're instead going to do is find one of the options we want to trade. So in this case, the 170 calls. I'm going to go ahead and right click on either the bid or the ask. So again, we're right clicking this time. That is then going to open up a little menu down here and give us a few different options. So we could buy, we could sell, or we could create a custom order. Now in my case, what we want to do is buy a vertical call spread. So we're going to come up here to the buy category. We're going to come over here to the right where we can now see a list of all of the different types of spreads we could create. In our example, what we wanted to do was a long vertical call spread. So we want to do a vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You can then see down below, it automatically builds out a vertical spread down here. It's sticking with our default quantity. So right now it's sticking to 10 contracts. But this time you can see the top line is to buy 10 of the 170s. And then the bottom line right here is to sell 10 of the 172 and a halves. Thinkorswim is always going to pick the next available strike as the default. So that's why right here I picked 172 and a half rather than 175 or 180. But we could always adjust it simply by clicking on it and then picking the strike price we wanted to move it to. So in this case, if I wanted to move it to the 175 strike, I'll just go ahead and change it to that. And now looking down below, it says if I was to do this spread, if I was to buy the 170, simultaneously sell the 175, I'm going to be paying $1.90 per vertical. We can also see right down here below, it is giving me the current mid price of $1.90, but then the natural price of $205. And just keep in mind, the natural price is the price we know we can fill at. The mid price is going to be the price we hope we can fill at. We can always ask for better than this, or the mid price. I'm just saying there is no guarantee that we're going to get a fill if we're asking for anything less than the natural. I am usually going to put this in at the mid and hope I get filled at that price, but I always know I might have to adjust it a little bit to get a fill. Now, besides that, I know the math is really simple in this case because we're only doing 10. In this case, remember, the total would be $190 or $190 times 10. So in this case, this trade is going to cost us a total of $1,900. But one annoying thing about Thinkorswim is that it doesn't tell you anywhere on this trade ticket. In order for us to see that total, we actually have to come down to the lower right-hand corner and click on Confirm and Send. And now looking up here at the top, it now tells us what our max loss could be. So in this case, the max loss, also going to be the total cost of this trade, 
is going to be $1,900. Now, if I still wanted to edit that, maybe that's a little too pricey for me. I could always come down here and hit edit. And now if we come over to the left and adjust the quantity down to one, let's say we actually wanted to place this. So what I'm going to do is come over here and hit confirm and send again, and then hit send. If we now head back over to our monitor page, which remember is one place we can always come to keep track of what's going on in our account right now. And if we look up here at the top, we have an open order to buy that vertical spread for $1.90. We can also see the current price of that spread or the mid price of that spread is $1.90. And if the market was open right now, this trade would have probably filled right away. But if for whatever reason it didn't and you needed to either cancel the order or maybe edit the price or the number of contracts you wanted to trade, just like with all of our previous examples, if we ever want to edit anything, we are simply going to right-click anywhere on the order, so anywhere on this green line, and then down below we will either hit cancel order to outright cancel it, or cancel slash replace to edit it in some way. Now in my case, I just want to outright cancel it, so we'll go ahead and do that. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just finished working on the beta of my very own trading journal. So those of you active traders out there, especially those of you who trade options, might find this especially useful. Here you're going to be able to quickly identify your performance by strategy, see a calendar of your daily profits and losses, and overall just create more detailed reports based on any of your filtered criteria. So check it out using the link below or head over to traderlog.io to give it a try for free for 7 days and use the code traderlog50 for 50% off. But enough of that, let's get back to the video. And now moving on to our next example, if we come back up here to the trade tab, the next method I'm going to show you is actually my preferred way of creating a spread. I think it's going to be a lot quicker for you, but it's a little confusing when you're brand new. So let's say for this next one, you wanted to sell a vertical put spread against Google. We'll stick to the same symbol. Now, since we're going to be selling a put spread, we're going to be looking over here on the right hand side. And for this one, let's just say we wanted to sell the 160 by 155. Now, if you remember, one thing I could have done is simply right clicked on either the 160 and 155 and then said sell vertical. But in my case, what I instead want to do is find the first option I want to trade, which in this case was the 160 put. And because I wanted to sell this one, I'm going to begin by clicking on the bid price of $3.30. You can then see that down below, it builds out a single leg order to sell 10 of the Google 15 November 160 puts. And if I was to do this, remember, this would just be a cash secured put or a naked put, depending on my approval. However, what I wanted to do was turn this into a vertical. So I'm next going to come up here and find the option I wanted to buy, in this case, the 155 put. And before I click on this asking price, what I need to do is hold down the control key on the keyboard. So holding down control on the keyboard actually tells Thinkorswim that we're creating a spread, that we're adding another leg to our trade. So you'll see that while I'm holding down control, when I click on the current asking price, you'll actually see that that new leg gets added to our trade down here below. So now I'm selling 10 of the 160s, buying 10 of the 155s, and we're collecting a credit of $1.34. So again, if we were to actually do this, if we hit confirm and send, You'll see here that my max profit is $13.40. My max loss is going to be $3,660. And again, if we wanted to edit that, we could just come down here below, adjust our quantity, maybe bump it up a little bit. Now I'm selling 20. Or we could always just double click on the number here, adjust it down to, let's say, one for now. And we could always ask for more income. So in this case, we could bump this up, bump up the premium to $1.50 in this case. And just like before, if I wanted to place it, confirm and send, make sure everything looks right, then hit send. Heading back over to the monitor page once again, we can now see that order right up here at the top to sell that vertical for $1.50 or better. Now, going through a different type of spread as an example, we'll head back up to the trade page again. And for this next one, let's say we wanted to do a butterfly spread on Apple. So we're going to go ahead and change this from Google over to Apple. You can see down here, I still have the 15 November expiration open. So let's go ahead and minimize that. And for this one, let's say we wanted to do the 1st of November. 
because we're going to be doing a butterfly which consists of selling two options and then buying one leg on either side, I actually find the right-click method to be far faster for things like butterflies or calendars or diagonals. So that's what we're going to use for this one. So in this case, let's say I wanted to put a butterfly on the put side at the 230 strike. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click either on the bid or asking price of that 230 strike. I'm then going to say I want to buy a butterfly. I can find it in here. And now looking down below, you can again see it builds out a butterfly spread for me. Let me go ahead and adjust this down. Only one real quick. And now looking over here, you can again see the middle strike is exactly where we wanted. So right at the 230 strike where we right clicked earlier. And then like I mentioned earlier, the default strikes are always going to be just one to either side. So if we want to change that, let's go ahead and move it to five points out. So I'm going to change this one to 235 and this one to 225. And now I've got a five point wide butterfly built out on Apple. You can see over here, I'm paying 67 cents for it. But just like anything else, we could always adjust that down. Maybe I only want to buy this if I can get it for 10 cents. And then I'll just come down below and hit confirm and send again. It'll tell me right here, the most I could ever make on this spread is going to be $490, which is simply going to be the width of the spread. So in this case, five points wide minus what we're paying for it. Now you can also see what we're paying for it, that $10, that is going to be the most we could ever lose. And now to place it, we'll simply come down below and hit send. Now, finally, to wrap all of this up, we'll go over one other spread, one additional spread, and we'll use a completely different stock for our example. So for this one, we're going to go with Tesla here. And what we're going to go over is an iron condor, which is typically going to be used when you think the stock is going to trade sideways, which is not really what Tesla does, but we're going to go ahead and do it for this example. So let's just say we want to put on an iron condor for, let's say, 56 days out. So the 20th of December, we can then begin on either side because we need to use both calls and puts for the iron condor. It doesn't really matter where we start. But for me, I always start on the put side. So in this case, let's say we want to begin by selling the 245 by 240 put spread. So in this case, we're basically just saying we think Tesla is going to stay above 245 by the 20th of December. So in this case, we'll begin by clicking on the bid of the 245. We'll then hold down the control key, click on the ask of the 240. You can then see down below here, we have now built out a vertical put spread. And we just need to now do the exact same thing on the call side. So for this one, let's also say we think it's going to stay below 280. So we'll come up here to the 280 strike call. Going to hold down the control key and click on the bid price. I'm then going to buy the 285 call as the hedge. So we'll come over here to the asking price. Click on that. And now looking down below here, you can see we built out the iron condor. We're selling the 280, buying the 285 selling the 245 put, buying the 240 put. So essentially, as long as Tesla stays between 280 and 245, hopefully it sticks between there, we could stand to make $347 per spread. Now, in the event that we're wrong, we could lose the width. So in this case, let's just have it do the math for us. We'll hit confirm and send down here. And looking up above, you can see in the worst case scenario, if Tesla has a big move up or down, we could lose 1500 bucks on this trade. However, looking right above that, we could also stand to make $3,400 if Tesla stays between, what did I say, 245 and 280. So let's say we're happy with that. We're happy with that risk. We're going to go ahead and place it just like every other way we did it, coming down here below, hitting send. Now, if we head back over to our monitor page, we're going to see all of those orders working for us. We've got the iron condor on Tesla. We've got the butterfly on Apple. And we've got that vertical against Google. But I know that can be a little bit tricky, so definitely try practicing this a few times in paper money, and I'm sure you're going to get the hang of it fairly quick. Stick around for the next video where we're going to learn how to customize our charts and add indicators. Click the video below, and I'll see you there.